This poem, uh, last, just, it was just last Friday, a week ago Friday, that Patrick Doherty and Walt Stanley came down to my farm with their two boys and my son and myself. We took a walk down the road, and this poem is about that walk. Each, each man with his son beside him. As dusk became dark, three men, each with his son beside him, lay on the gravel of the Pine Creek Road, and the six licked starlight as it fell. Like the fragrance of goldenrod or medicinal yarrow, whispers lifted, then drifted, over the road, around the bend, toward the river. We six were three family shadows, separated on the pale stone road. The creek trickled across the ford. It, too, whispered to the evening. From that place, the creek moves to disappear beneath the bluff so it can spring once again a half mile away on the far side of the hill. Men and boys keep each other alive, and we don't know how long our time will last. Like the space between stars or the design of constellations, those patterns are made somewhere else. As we returned to the old farm truck, walking beneath basswood and black ash, each son clung close, wrapped to his father, nervous and safe beside his dad. Someday we'll let go. Already I feel the ache. Will my friends be there for my comfort? Yes, just above the hill, shining through the leaves, a steadfast Jupiter walks glowing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, Robert asked me to read this, uh, this poem. And uh, it's kind of uncanny uh, following Tim's because um, it's almost, uh, almost the reverse side of Tim's poem. It's about feeling uh, uh, unsafe or unprotected as a son. Uh, it's called uh, At Shaw's Resort. <clears throat> In the Stone Tavern, well, I have to tell you, um, you're only going to hear this once, so you don't know this until the end of the poem, but I'm about 10 years old, if you uh, need to know that. In the stone tavern, Dad orders a Pabst for himself, a seven-up for me. Sweaty short hairs bristle beneath the band of his baseball cap. Something in his voice has relaxed since the argument back at the house. Now he maintains an almost clinical distance, a mechanic assessing a difficult repair job. Under the yellow lamp, he tells George Shaw how unreasonable women are. Heavy June rain has flooded the dock, rowboats low at anchor with the weight of water. I stare into glass display cases of flint artifacts unearthed in burial mounds along the river. Words like arrowheads can lodge in living flesh. I don't want to listen to them. I'm 10 years old. In a tank by the door, panicky minnows swarm as one and race to escape when one of us bends near. Give us the last stanza once more. Okay. Uh, I'm going to back up a couple lines. Words like arrowheads can lodge in living flesh. I don't want to listen to them. 
I am ten years old. In a tank by the door, panicky minnows swarm as one and race to escape when one of us bends near. Mm. Now, uh, you can come in on this one. What's that? It's uh, uh, medium tempo. <laughs> Mid tempo. Um, this poem is called Housewarming, and uh, it's basically a dream. Uh, and there's something about it that reminds me of um, times like this when we've all been together for a while, and it's as if there's this, um, this huge ancestral breast that we've all got our arms joined around. And, you know, the more we're together, the more it squeezes at, and the more this honey and milk comes out, and the more fed we feel. So this was a dream like that with, with this ancestral breast uh, pouring out uh, images into the dream. Housewarming. In my dream, I was the first to arrive at the old home from church. Wind and night had forced through the cracks. I pushed inside, turned on lamps, lit a fire in the stove. Frozen oak logs stung my fingers. It was good pain, my hands reddening on the icy broom handle as I swept away snow. On Christmas Eve, I prepared a warm place for my mother and father, sister and brothers, grandparents, all my relatives, none dead, none missing, none angry with another, all coming through the woods. Christmas Eve. Yeah, I see a lot of my poems work like this. You know, you only find out crucial information at the end. I don't know if that's a shortcoming or if I'm just being cunning and trying to get people to read them more than once. <laughs> Housewarming. In my dream, I was the first to arrive at the old home from church. Wind and night had forced through the cracks. I pushed inside, turned on lamps, lit a fire in the stove. Frozen oak logs stung my fingers. It was good pain, my hands reddening on the icy broom handle as I swept away snow. On Christmas Eve, I prepared a warm place for my mother and father sister and brothers, grandparents, all my relatives, none dead, none missing, none angry with one another, all coming through the woods. Thank you. Well, we have one poem left. We've been talking about morning poems, so I thought I should read you the one I wrote this morning. So you have to understand it's bad. Because <laughs> that's the way it is. Well, the world catches us. One bird call. And we're in it again. One new phase, and we're gone. Where? To her place. Quotation marks. Let's go to your place. <laughs> Ferns, 40 necklaces, hanging on the hooks and skirts. There's something here, like the paws of a tiger. You know what I'm talking about? You walk into a woman's room, 
There's something here, like the paws of a tiger. Your job is not to be the prey. but to provide the supple body above the claws. Your job is not to be the prey, but to provide the supple body above the claws. Someone is shining here. Someone is shining here. There's always a shining. And soon the other tiger will come. The one who's been missing her paws. Soon the other tiger will come. The one who's been missing her paws. Ah, well, you never intended to live long. <laughs> Just sing to the two tigers. I'll do it again. <laughs> but if you, if you heard it the first time, walking into the house of a living woman with her wonderful necklaces hanging on the wall, then do it this time. Think of this time about coming into that place where we were last night when we were singing that song. That's the woman on the wall, too. Well, she's riding tigers this time. All right, I'll do it faster. Well, the world catches us. One bird call, and we're in it again. One new face, and we're gone. Where? To her place. She's got ferns, 40 necklaces hanging on, on nails and skirts. There's something here like the paws of a tiger. Your job is not to be the prey. Got to be 40 before you realize that. <laughs> but instead to provide like the missing supple body above the paws. Well, someone is shining here. There's always a shining in this stuff. Soon the other tiger will come. The one who's been missing her paws. Is that right, Robert? Soon the other tiger will come. The one who's been missing her paws. Oh well, you never intended to live long. So I had two possibilities to end it. Just forget your childhood. Dance and live. That's one possibility, but it's easy to say, so maybe it should be. Forget your childhood, just sing to the two tigers. Is that better? Thank you, Mark.